Hello. Um, oops, I did it again. I uh, bonked, but uh, fortunately I had something uh, around. My good friend Lou, who was taking me out cycling, had some uh, carbs for me. I was able to take those carbs and in a, in a, um, avoid a significant uh, problem associated with bonking. What, what does bonking mean? It's hypoglycemia. Why is it associated with um, exercise? We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R, -E -E and um, I work with a group called PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Disability Prevention Center. Um, <clears throat> so uh, one, of our, one of my viewers, John Loyscheiders, a uh, significant bicycling, uh, bicycling, bicyclist, um, and he wrote in, <clears throat> he uh, commented about my uh, hypoglycemic episode. Very informative. Thank you. It's nice to hear others have the same issues as I do. Um, I was able to get back on the bike yesterday after a two-month layoff. Only rode two hours. So again, he's already got significant experience with it, but with good intensity. No snacks or energy drinks, just water, although I had a packet of trail mix in my jersey in case of a hypo episode. When done, my blood glucose was 65, and I was thinking I might go down for the count, but I didn't. I, resist, I resisted refueling while riding and ate 15 raw almonds, a small slice of turkey, and a small piece of cheese when I got home. Back up to 84 for his blood sugar before dinner. So, <clears throat> Uh, I wish I'd, he'd posted that and I'd read it and thought about it before this weekend because one week, less than a week after I had a hypoglycemic episode, um, woke up with it at four in the morning, I had one immediately post-exercise or about five minutes post-exercise. <clears throat> now, that raises a question. I've not really had significant... Uh, hypoglycemia episodes in the past, at least that I was aware of. Um, I've been on metformin for six months, not even six months, um, and I've recently had two episodes. So this is one of the questions that often comes up. Does metformin cause hypoglycemia? It's not... It, officially, the official statement, and I think it's... and it's true, proven by research, um, it doesn't. It's the biguanide class of meds. Um, there are some older oral meds like the sulfonylureas that used to do that. The self, they have different mechanisms of action. The sulfonylureas actually um, decreased blood sugar. Metformin doesn't do that. But what it does do is decrease uh, the liver's ability to make sugar from from uh, glycogen and put it back into the blood. So if you do something like you're already um, hypoglycemic from exercise, it makes it harder for your liver to make glycogen or to break down glycogen and raise that blood sugar again. Actually, um, after about 10 miles of uh, riding, my experienced cycling friend Lou uh, suggested I take one of these. He's always looking out for us junior riders. And I'm a junior rider compared to him. He's very experienced. Uh, the other rider that was with us was also experienced. Um, but I've been in good shape most of my life. I've run several marathons and I um, stay thin, keep a BMI of about 20, in the low 20s, 22. So I'm able, and I cycled a lot when I was a kid, so I'm able to jump on it and do pretty well. This was a hard course, for, and it was a stretch for me. We went about 30 miles, um, did it in a little, little over two hours, and there was a lot of hills. So that was something that I wasn't quite in shape for. I was looking kind of bad, a little bit tired at mile 10. Lou suggests I take one of these. I noticed it had significant carbs when it was so sweet, so I spit it out. I regretted that. <clears throat> Actually, I fatigued over the next uh, 20 miles, but really didn't have a bonk until about five minutes after I got off the bicycle. 
And that's when all of a sudden, wham, it hit me. I um, got nauseated. I broke out in a cold sweat. And um, Lou looked at me and said, you don't look so good. I decided to take him up on these carbs. And sure enough, those did help me, uh, help me stop that hypoglycemic episode. So here's a couple of other things about hypoglycemia. Ever hear of uh, Harvard Medical School and the Joslin Diabetic Center? Um, they've got some really good information about why is my blood glucose sometimes low after physical activity? Well, the bottom line is there are only a couple of ways to decrease sugar in your blood. One is with insulin and sulfonylureas and other drugs. A second way is muscles that are active. Active muscles pull sugar out of the bloodstream and into the muscle to be burned. So, uh, what, what they say at Joslin is uh, low blood glucose is defined at about a level 70 or below. Uh, one of the most common causes of low blood sugar is exercise. Um, <clears throat> a couple of other points about it. We're going to talk about it in just a second. When we're first of all, how do we burn? What are our fuel sources when we're exercising? For the first fifteen minutes, well, first of all, it's two sources: sugar and free fatty acids or fat. Um, <clears throat> glycogen is the storage form of sugar, and you have glycogen in the liver and in the muscles. So for the first 15 minutes, uh, blood sugar and muscle glycogen are the major sources. From about 15 minutes to about 30 minutes, you start getting more of it from liver glycogen, where the liver is breaking down uh, the glycogen and, and uh, releasing that as sugar into the blood. After about uh, 30 minutes, it starts to become all free fatty acids or fat that you're burning. Now, the replacement can take anywhere from 4 to 24 hours. So... Again, you have to be careful, especially if you're on medications like uh, metformin that slow down the liver's ability to, to pull your blood sugar back up. So again, the hypoglycemic episodes I was having were um, caused not by um, metformin, but by the exercise. It's just that taking the, um, the metformin slowed down my liver's ability to... Uh, to pull that blood sugar back up. So again, from Joslin, here are a few recommendations for post-exercise hypoglycemia. Number one, to prevent it, um, check sugar before exercise and, and consider a snack. If you're on insulin, which really d decreases your uh, blood sugar, avoid exercise during the peak time for your insulin. Um, avoid late evening exercises. Hold on just a second. Because you don't want to bonk when you're asleep or after you've gone to sleep. Avoid alcohol consumption after exercise. Why is that? Alcohol has the same impact as metformin in terms of stopping your liver's ability to break down glycogen and increase the blood sugar. So alcohol, metformin together will uh, are significant problems. And then you put that with with uh, exercise, and that's a, a triple whammy to your blood sugar. Avoid uh, hot tubs, saunas, steam rooms, etc. Well, I, th I think that's obvious, and the reasons are obvious. Limit exercises to our sessions to one or two daily. Uh, check sugar after exercise, uh, both immediately and two, two to four hours later. And if it's less than 70, go ahead and take a snack. Again, that's um, recommendations from the Joslin uh, Center for Diabetes at Harvard. Um, here's just a couple of comments. Hypoglycemia can be dangerous. Obviously, in my last video, I showed pictures of a wreck that occurred because someone was hypoglycemic. Um, 
we're, we're managing our blood sugar. High blood sugar, diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, kills a lot of people. In fact, probably more people than any other individual cause. So the risks, uh, it's clearly um, appropriate to manage our blood glucose levels. But when we do that, we need to realize that hypoglycemia, although it kills a lot fewer, it can kill. So we, uh, we need to manage that risk. And managing the risk is not that difficult. Um, we just do that with proper care. Some of the things that I just mentioned from the Joslin Clinic. So, uh, thank you for your attention.